Okay. So thank you very much. I want to thank very much Trevor. I want to thank Anna. I want to thank Harry, Elizabeth, and everybody for organizing this um, event in Athens. Um, I, I, for me, it's very special, especially since I cannot be there. So I'm very, not just virtually, but uh, I just have this longing being away. Uh, so what I would like to introduce myself. Um, my, I'm Jenny Marchetto. I'm an interdisciplinary artist. I'm a researcher. I'm also a professor and I teach at the New School for Social Research in New York where I'm talking right now from. Um, my interest in general is in what I call anarcho-collectivism, theater, law, and urban studies. I organize workshops, I produce publications, radio broadcasts, archives, and exhibition work, which is focuses on using new media technologies and non-competitive pedagogical models through the framework of contemporary art. I decided to write because I know we are, we are at the end of the conference. I know people are tired. So I'll try to be very fast. And um, so my talk is about my art practice, but it is also about methods and models that have been preoccupied me for years as to how to imagine new structures of meaning where art is not a commodity but creates places and events where people gather in the spirit of freedom and justice embedded with knowledge and structures of codependence. Places, actions and events which, which have the ability to transcend the connection we have with our human body, but also with all species, because we are everywhere and we are everything. An art practice, which is an organic apparatus, which feeds itself and allows for participation, collaboration, transition, expansions, inclusions, transformations, and regeneration where I'm releasing author authorship. And I hope what to do is to plant seeds and awareness. An art practice that confronts the issues of life, such as disparities due to the pandemic, Black Lives Matters, white supremacy, and social, economic, and cultural crisis. And we all know when we are on state of emergency, the protocols are broken in different contexts and in various layerings of existence. Today I decided to the wait because I saw um, has been featured one image of my work, of public work, because always I have been very interested in, in the public space. Uh, a, a, an image of an installation is not I, I don't even consider an installation, an apparatus of 99 red balloons. So I want to go back. So what I, I decided today is to, to, to somehow to show some of the, you know, some, some works that are sometimes, you know, they go back, but they are very relevant. I, and, and I hope we have time to talk about what is the relevance that they, uh, produced. And then I'll go to some very, very recent works, which are act actually take place in Greece. You have to, to, to take in consideration that I live between two countries. Um, and I have been doing this because I studied and I live in Greece in uh, New York since 90s. But I always try to go back to Greece and embed myself with what is happening there. So Harry, can we go to, to, to the next uh, uh, okay, so can you go a little bit up? Okay, so I'm going back to it. work. Go one more. Uh, called Smell Bites. Smell Bites, and, I, and I'm reading, so I go very fast. It was inspired by the perfume of fascinating novel by Pat, Patrick Sasaki. You see, it goes very bad. And by the manifesto, the, anthropo, the, the anthropophagy manifesto of 1928, of Andreadi. 
I create my own story of cannibalism named Smell Bites, conceived and realized during a residency in Banff Center for the Arts in Alberta, and launched actually as the representation of the biennial in Sao Paulo in Brazil. The realization of the work is based on a huge collaborative research process with a programmer, a hiker, a scientist, and a perfumer. During the time, I was part also of the Net 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 Collective that we did an amazing series of actions and interventions in the border of Tijuana between the US and Mexico, all based on the internet. The work which this work makes use of the internet and touches on upon urgent issues and very relevant topics to my today, such as virtual space, social and public space, networking, interconnectivity, surveillance, disembodied subjectivity, reverse engineering, hacking, and breaking protocols. It acts as a poetic meditation on the invasion of our privacy. I mean, I, I, for me, it's very important. Through digital technologies, Smellbytes is a virtual apparatus, which in a way, I, I, I had a character, Chris, a bot, an algorithm, we live on algorithms, as we all know, programmed to be driven by its olfactory desires, lurking and sniffing servers and IP addresses of chat rooms and teleconference environments in order to capture human profiles and through facial recognition reduces each subjectivity into a series of database biochemical traits and odors and collects them in its stinky gallery. Go one more, please, Harry. This process of, of transformation and classification is becoming visible and is this projected in real time video streaming on the walls of the gallery. In smell bite, I, I, I investigates these aesthetics and implications and protocols and ethics by working on the interface of virtual space of the net, while at the same time creates a visual universe of the physical space. Because as you see, what I was doing, I was letting, all, as always in my work, the audience become the author. So through the computer, this is actually part of from ZKM uh, during the net condition exhibition. And actually the piece belongs to net to ZKM. It now is part of the ZKM collection and in which the, the, the audience becomes part of this sniffing and this collection that the stinky gallery of Chris. But at the same time, you see this cinematic, but in real time of the other people who in the chat rooms, they think they, they are private, but at the same time, it's so, so public. So it's a very, for me, it was a very interesting approach to, to, to um, explore what it means, the public space of the internet as a potentiality to make work, but also to create a social space which also raises so many questions and which, as I say, we can discuss later because when I was looking into my catalog from the biennial years ago and I saw this, I hope you can see it. It reminds me a little bit what we are doing right now, the way we are using uh, Zoom. Okay, so let's go to next, next, next. And this is the sticking gallery, how the database of the profile of human subjectivity is deconstructed and is, is it saved as, you know, as, sim as sim symbols as database. Let, let, let's go one more, please, Harry. Let's go. Then with this idea of the public space or surveillance, I wanted to be more playful and also um, I, I had the, the opportunity to have, again, a, a residency at IBM in New York. And I was very, it was a time that we were also thinking about public space, but how can you engage public space in, in a more playful way, still though addressing the, the issues of uh, connectivity, um, uh, community, public space, net, networking, surveillance. So let's go up, up, up. 
So here I had two pieces that I did, one Red Eye Skywalkers in 210, and then the Silver Series. Let's go to, to the Red Eye Skywalkers. Next. No. Okay, so here, let's go up. So this is a, probably some of you saw it already used in, uh, as an image, and it's a very interesting project for me because it taught me a lot about public space. So this is the right, you know, as we see, is a cluster of uh, vinyl red balloons, huge balloons that they are weather balloons, actually. And some of them under the balloons were small surveillance cameras, which all they were doing, they were capturing discussions, you know, very arbitrary, very, but then everything that was collected was projected in the cafe. There was a small cafe next door. So people, they were having the cafe and somehow they were connecting between this piece and what was happening there, what was happening in the cafe. So there was the whole idea that through the, 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 this playful, um, a, you know, cloud of floating balloons, they were stories, everyday stories that people were, you know, ex excerpts, I would say, people walking through, going by. And Pladio Kodia is just in front of the uh, uh, city hall in Athens. Now we go back, this is 2010. And uh, also, I, I wanted very much people to be aware of the issue of surveillance. I want to be because our cities. Are, are very surveyed now more than ever. But even still then, and me also living in New York and traveling and do, you know, it, it, it was a very obvious aspect of our public space, which was, I wanted people to be aware. Uh, what, you know, this piece is, this is the last iteration. Actually, the piece started in Basel. And um, as I, I have for every work that I'm showing, I have a, 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 net, a, a, a connection, I have a, a URL, which I will be very glad because if I go through, because it's very interesting to, to see these works as, as, as movies, as videos, because they have so much interaction. They are very performative. When this piece started, the idea was, which I was able to, 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 to do, the, I mean, to, to incorporate this in the work. It started in Basel. It was in, in Basel in Switzerland. And it, it's part, it was part of the, of, 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 the, uh, of the plaza in front of the museum. And uh, people there were allowed to take the balloons. And they were allowed to go around the city of Basel and do their own surveillance stories and bring them back. And then there is also the Opera House, and I collaborated with a, with a, with a conductor. So we were taking all this information and we were translating into a, into a very short opera, which then we were distributing through live screaming all over. So you are very welcome to, to when to give you those um, URLs so you can see those works in, in this full. I will finish with this. This was the last iteration and the most exciting. And I tell you why, because the people of Athens loved this project so much, which in two days it disappeared. Um, I was in New York, you know, everybody was calling me, oh, the vandalism, horrible, what happened? How do you feel? You know what I thought? I felt wonderful because it taught me two things again and again that to public space has to be in, rela in, in, in connection and after long discussions with the people that they embed this public space, the people that they are living around that public space, to let them know what is happening, you have to engage them which we do very much in New York and in other countries. But in that time, in 2010, still in Athens, people were not so much involved in this kind of discussions, I would say. So when you see something that they bring and they put it in your space, you, you, you have to know, you, you are wondering. But anyway, you know what I thought? I love the idea that they took all the balloons. I, I don't think it was a vandalism. I mean, let, let's think that the, the, the piece of Gonzalez Torres, he has his candies in the museum. People take the candies. By the end of the, the exhibit, 
there is nothing left. So I thought it was the most beautiful ending for the 99 red balloons. Can we go to the next, please? So here is another version of the, the, the same idea. This is Kumu Art Museum. I was invited to do this project again, um, but it was now very protected because it's in, in, in the courtyard of the museum. And in a way it was a part of the, when Tallinn in Estonian was the cultural capital of Europe. And this is one of the works that they chose to be part of that uh, capital of Europe. There, of course, the work is very protected. Uh, it was very beautifully installed and um, it lasts there. And that's why I'm using the, this material, which is a NASA material and can last in, uh, through the time. And so let's go now. Uh, Harry, can we go? So here are two links about the red balloons and then it's female. Uh, or smell bites, they don't exist anymore. Smell bites, it, it, it became a, a, a victim of its own uh, smartness, as they say, because, because after several years working online, actually, it was hacked from the server in Banff and we, never, and we decided we would never install it. Now I'm working with the Whitney Museum and we are hoping to do with Rhizome at the new museum, actually, to, to archive it, but in a very basic way, so people just get an idea of how it was working. So, let, so I can send you from Rhizome at the new museum the, 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 connect, the, the, the URL. Let's go, let's go. Okay, so here you see, all of a sudden we change. The above works, I want to say, made me very interested in the issue of connectivity, gathering, social space, apparatus, dependency, but also fundamental, but they raised a lot of fundamental questions about human subjectivity. I wanted to explore ways in my practice to counteract the disembodiment, the productivism, and the bureaucratic generalization that the online environment was living on. So I became more interested in real people and real places. How to bring people together to create a place embedded with knowledge, which allows for continuous extensions and metamorphosis like as that I was using and what is that, the algorithm. So here we are, Peperofanias, it's 2011. It's, I'm going back because they, I, I think they are very important project. And the word Peperofanias, paper, it means paper surface. And a surface can be conceived as a place, a space, a time for action and self-expression. Um, this is a work that was commissioned by the Atrium Museum in collaboration with the Guggenheim in Bilbao. This is, happens in, in, um, in a city uh, 45 minutes outside. The Atrium Museum is located in Victoria, which is 45 minutes uh, from Bilbao, which Bilbao is a very industrial place in Spain, as we know, in the Basque country. And as we know, the Basque country has very political uh, issues and, uh, and, and an incredible number of immigration issues and poverty and I can go on. Um, and, and so uh, still, so in 2011, these issues were existing. So I was invited by uh, Blanca de la Torre, the curator of the museum, to be part of a project, the Praxis projects, the project Praxis projects that they give you the gallery, the main one of the galleries of the museum, which you start from zero, and you have two months to work inside the gallery, so that people come and they become a part of your process. So I decided to do Peperofanius, which was can, uh, it was one um, the idea, which was an idea that. It, it, it was a Warhol, Warholian idea. Actually, Warhol was the first who did the paper, what he called poster, at the Brooklyn Museum. So, so someone wore a paper and, and he sprayed a message. So for me, I decided to turn the gallery into a laboratory 
which I invite people. I, I, I worked with um, the education department of the, of the Guggenheim, the education department of the Artum, and also we had, it, I, I, I must say, some budget to bring people into the museum from kids from five years old to senior citizen, 80 years old. So every day I had two workshops in which we were talking about sign, we were talking about messaging, we were talking about what they wanted to say. And some of them, they wouldn't even speak Spanish. So I had through a translation, we were, they were creating their own dress with their own way, and they were writing their own message. And then this lasted, it was a, 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 a time, you know, it, 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 I, I spent a lot of time with this project, but it was beautiful to bring people, all these people together in that space. And then on, um, it was, I remember, the, um, it was, yes, uh, November 26, 2011. It's the day that we celebrate the abuse of women. So we wore these dresses and we went out in the city and we had the parade. Uh, can you move? Two minutes. I don't know if, I don't have time to show you, it's, but please go and see because it was a beautiful, no, that, that's the next. So, uh so so we went no this is another project but uh, it was very interesting to see people um gathering and, and 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 the energy that they brought in the city celebrating the the, the that day which is dedicated to the abuse of women we have collected 800 addresses 800 messages and I did a, a, then I brought them in New York and we did an auction and I auctioned every every dress for one dollar and I sent this uh, this money back and they gave it to one of the young uh, one of the um, houses there that they host uh, uh, immigrants because the conditions were really really bad so it was very beautiful to see these dresses somehow to, to to, to go from one country to the other and then go back and all these uh, relational aesthetics also that have been created. Let's go to the next. Okay, so go up, 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 up. So this is another project which is called Sunspotting a Walking Project. This is a commission from the High Line. Now we, we changed, the, now we are High Line in New York. This is 2012. Um, as, 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 as sunspotting and working force that was a community-based project uh, with which for this project I collab collaborate with Otto von Butch. He's a philosopher uh, who also talks very, in cultural theories and Wanda Gala who is a choreographer and also I work with a participation of students from Parsons Schools of Design, Clinton Middle School and seniors from the Fulton House which is in Chelsea. As we know High Line is a very now has become a designer's park. It's a beautiful park but what with the beauty, it brought a lot of issues, especially in 2012, due to what, uh, uh, due to the gentrification, and that created in uh, Chelsea, and that's why I worked with local schools and seniors, and through workshops for three months. Um, actually, I want also to mention here is very important. Uh, the piece was commissioned by Born Art and the, the French of the High Line in which we decided we were talking about what happened to, to these people that they had to leave the, the community that they were born. The young kids that they start living in this community and now became so expensive, so exclusive. What, what is happening to this place that although it's beautiful, it becomes a beautiful park, but at the same time in the cost of so many people losing their schools, their housing, their life. So we, we created again a series of posters, but as you see the posters, although they, they are politics in a way, they're very poetic. 
So what we decided to do, the piece was after three months of, uh, um, of uh, workshops and coming up with ideas what we are going to write, we had this invasion, I would say, in the park, which was almost choreographed in a way with 40 uh, participants that they were uh, uh, performer. And we somehow imitated in this performance, we tried to imitate how homeless people um, unbed the public space, the gestures, the body language. So here you, you see the start, um, the whole, uh, uh, Harry, can we go down? Uh, everything is on, please go online and see what happened. I mean, it's beautiful how people, how we move through this park. And on purpose, we moved against the way the visitors, it was a very impromptu, uh, uh, I mean, on purpose, the, the, the park knew, the, the security knew, but we want somehow to invade the, the space. So all these visitors that they came in this beautiful park that sells designer seeds, designers coffee, everything is designers now. Um, you are, uh, 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 you, you have to face this, posters, which in a way had also something very interesting. I worked with a company in, in uh, Japan who also became my, my supporter. And what we used, the lettering was used with this special ink, which you can only when it's, it's, it's very uh, light sensitive. So you can read only when the light uh, strikes on those surfaces. So as we were walking, depending on the light, those, um, the, those uh, um, messages, they fade in, they fade out. So also they create this, I wanted to use this let's say, activist strategy of the, the, the message, but at the same time, because we were in nature. And I wanted to also to take in, in, in consideration with the, that we were among this beautiful nature. I wanted my walking forest to have this poetic essence. So it fades in, it fades out, depending on how we walk. So let's go to, to do the next. Because we, we have I, to I uh, turn off. We have to uh, conclude, I think. Yes, okay. So uh, th there is a book from Duke University that came out for this and George, George uh, so let, let's go. I want to, to finish with, I go fast with my Greek projects. Can I have five minutes? Well, we're really, Never, uh, we're, have... well, we're, 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 three minutes, let's do it like that. Uh, okay, so uh, can we, uh, can I show one? Yes, of course, but we're just losing people, but show one. Yes, please keep the time. You see, come, there are messages coming. Please keep the time. So we okay, have to so really so try so and do a conclusion next, thing. Next, next, let's go next, 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 next. So this is how assemblies matter, which took place in the Polytechnic School in Greece. And it was um, a two days marathon with people that I invited from all, of, all over the world to, uh, to rethink what the assembly matter, especially in 2016. This project was also part of the biennial ammonia. Let, let's go, let's move, because I want to finish with one thing. So let's go, how assemblies matter. We made a book. Uh, there is also a, 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 a tumbler. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Th this is something I want to talk, and then I will finish. Uh, so the rehearsing and improbable assembly 2017 features young students aged 10 to, 10 to 12 from public schools in the environmental education, let's move, uh, that provides school with the opportunity to address issues of the urban space and environment, move more, as well as with young kids from refugee camps, as we were called, through three months of workshops um, which I conducted during class hours at nine schools and refugee kids at Dictio. We were working through experimental exercises inspired by the theater of the oppressed, a radical theater from developed by the Brazilian practitioner Augusto Boal, 
and through readings of the classic book, The Animal Farm. Young students learn to address oppression, violence, protest, community, but very important symbolism and the relationship with animals and plants is a powerful guide to survive and rise. In the world of animals and plants, we find an energy system that has its own specific strength and that is able to help human beings to improve and protect themselves during processes of growth and transformation. So by being aware of this complexity, can you please move? Uh, so here, as you see, so what was the idea is after, uh, after working with all these different groups separately, then it was, I was invited during the night of ideas and philosophy and in the amphitheater of the Goethe Institute, all these people, almost 200 uh, met for the first time and we uh, uh, perform what I call and uh, the rehearsal of an assembly, we did actually an assembly in which each of us uh, imagined that we had already created those uh, signs. Everybody was using their own uh, language. They were making their own uh, uh, message. But then for the first time we meet together and we have for four hours an assembly, each one imagining that it was a plant, it was a fish, it was a table, it was, it was a very amazing uh, a, a moment to bring all these uh, people together, these young people together. And also if you see the movie, it's, it's a whole movie. Can you move? Uh, so if you, you can see in the video and there is the last that after that i decided to continue my ongoing research and practice in the complexity of collectivity and experimental forms of pedagogy and that creating the garden is a kind of a, 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 a kind of learning and schooling and the social consequences and implications they have for young people that they go through this uh, kind of uh, very, very, uh, I would say frozen patriarchal education, especially in Greece. And instead of creating a work of art here, I mean, interested in creating possibilities for these young people and able to break existing protocols and create an other model for, for learning. And this time it is the symbolic, we depart from the idea of the, of the garden and we branch out into new sense of connectivity. And so what I'm trying again, as you see, I put all my focus, which for me is very important on, on, uh, uh, on youth. Here we are in, in the um, uh, foyer of Goethe Institute. Can you go down? Jenny, we're going to have to finish. We're not gonna... Yes, we're gonna yeah. And then okay. uh, there is a movie, since we cannot see, to see how that school was developed and how our syllabus is developed. We are making a book now, uh, which is a very, a way of do it yourself. How do we suggest in other youth people, how in young people to create their own school, their own syllabus. One thing that it was important that all these workshops, they, they were not after school. I was embedded in the, in, the, in the actual everyday program of all the okay. schools that I had Thank you, Jenny. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, I think, I mean, what is, what is amazing with the, all the projects you've presented, but also the, the energy um, you, you have is this sense of innocence which pervades everything, which I think is, is, is incredible. Uh, this sense of innocence, which I think is that which has the, the quality to to engage all these people in your in your projects and at the same time your manifesto which you started with about creating places and events and actions and so on this manifesto which you talked about is very similar to the manifesto i think which senior and peggy also led with about we need to create these new uh, spaces for recontextualizing uh, the thoughts the the um, and the uh, the considerations of artists and so on. So. It's